Yeshua said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. When he said, my peace I give to you, what, what do you think he meant by that? Okay, his peace is different than the normal human peace. The word shalom, peace, is much more than just peace. Okay. A wholeness, a soundness, a oneness, a completeness, health. It's, it's everything that we have need of. Yep. Yep. What else? Um, John? Yeah. Nope. I didn't know what he said. He said um, the peace uh, that the Messiah speaks of is the peace that the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, peace that Daniel had when they were in their respective um, challenges. Uh, rock in a hard place, uh, lion in a hard place. Uh, you're not supposed to be calm, according to the world. Because the world fears what it does not understand. And you and I have to be those that do understand what matters and where our hope and faith is. This body is going to die one way or the other. But where is our hope and our heart set upon? There's another passage that the Messiah says, when you enter into a home, what, what did he say? Okay. Let your peace be upon it. It's something that is, is tangible and it's, and it's real. As bearers of the Spirit, we carry with us something more precious that nobody can see, so to speak. But we extend the peace that we have through Messiah. And so this shalom, uh, as Bill alluded to, is, is, it's more than an absence of conflict. Um, it's a persevering through and a, and I say this subjectively, a measure of calmness in spite of certain trials. This peace is something that is, you can speak of it, but until you've tasted it, and you all have tasted it, perhaps at times, a little bit here, a little bit there. Roy? To me, it represents a combination of like humility and joy, and it's grace and it's mercy. It's all combined into one. Mm -hmm. When the first uh, deacon, uh, Stephen, was being stoned after giving a brilliant word to them, a God-inspired word, and they began to stone him. I, I've, I've been hit by some things, a baseball that hurt, especially in your head. I can't imagine being pelted with grapefruit-sized rocks over and over and over. Um, when you and I are slighted, our first inclination is to what? Get revenge. Get revenge. Oh, yeah? And our human nature reverts back to the old man. Or if it's, because I could say it gently, old woman. That still lives within us. It still is, is there. And like a dragon, it must be tamed until it is no longer present within us. This peace comes in, in, in little bits and pieces. Um, if you're completely calm and um, in harmony with God at all the time, without it missing a beat, I'd like to talk to you afterwards. But if you're like me, it's like this at times. And then maybe it's like this. It's a journey. Nothing is accomplished easily that is worth anything. We are on this journey. If we turn over to John chapter 13, please. John chapter 13. John chapter 13 and verse 31. It says that when he had gone out, Yeshua said, Now the Son of Man is glorified and God is glorified in him. And if God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. 
Little children, I shall be with you a little while longer, and you will seek me, as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I, I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, and that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, because you have love for one another. He says, I'm giving you a new commandment. It's not really a new commandment, really. It's just the old commandment uh, focused. Uh, the Ten Commandments were don't kill, steal, uh, lust, hate, all of the, the natural things which come to us after the fall. Basically, all, all that was saying, don't do this because that's not love. But love is that which God is. So he, he had to give us the don't do's so that we knew what to do. So don't steal, bless. Um, don't lie, speak truth. And he, he gives us those things. So the commandment to love is not so new. He just clarified it. He focused it and put it down. And he, and he says this in a very beautiful way. He says that all people will know that you are what? My disciples, my Talmudim, my, my, the ones who walk with me and learn from me. He says, they're going to know that you're mine. Because of the love that we have for one another. Love is the way that God is. He's, he's teaching you and, my, you and I to become like him. It says in verse 36 that Shimon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? And Yeshua answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me, but you, ne but you shall follow, sorry, you, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterwards. And Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. And Yeshua said to him, will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the the rooster shall crow, shall not crow till you have denied me three times. Um, why do you think he said to, to Peter, you can't come with me now? A lot of the disciples said, man, if you're going to die, I, th I think a couple of them got that part, we're going to die with you. you know, what, what greater honor is it to, to die with and for your teacher? Why do you think he said to Peter, you can't come now? Okay, wasn't his time? He had work to do. It wasn't finished yet. And it wasn't just the apostolic work of going out to the world. Our father Peter had work to do inside himself. And that's why he wasn't ready to go. I'm not ready to go yet. There's still so much work to be done within my heart. He says, it isn't time, but even more so, he began to understand even more so after the infilling of the Spirit of God, which we celebrated the, the beautiful Feast of Shavuot last uh, Sabbath, um, that was when everything changed. Uh, when the light of God illuminates our minds, we're able to understand things, and things make sense. You've heard a scripture a thousand times. Boom. In a flash of, of the illumination of the God, you go, ah! and I know you all know what I'm talking about, because you've had those sledgehammer moments where the God hits you, Puka chow whoa, wow, how didn't I see that before? Well, because we're dull. Um, our minds and our hearts are, are shadowed by many things, and so we need the light of God continually getting brighter within us. A father once said, God is perfect. He is faultless. And so when divine love become, becomes manifest in us, the fullness of grace, we radiate this love, not only on earth, but throughout the entire universe as well. So God in us, he is present everywhere, and it is God's all-encompassing love that manifests itself in us. Give me an example of God's love manifesting in us or in you. Okay. Um, have you ever done something like that? And, and you say to yourself afterwards, whoa, that's not like me. Have you ever held your tongue when you wish to say something? And you say afterwards, that's not like me. That's God in you and me. 
at work. Um, when we begin to allow that, things begin to change. Continuing, the Lord is always waiting for us to unite himself with us in love, but instead we drift further and further away from him, and we know that there can be no life without love. This means that there is no life without God, for God is love. But his love is not according to the understanding of the world, for the love that the world gives us consists of suffering and enslavement. Because the, the spirits of evil interfere with it, there is a little bit of love in the world, but mostly it is enslavement. See, the world defines love as do whatever you want. Whatever you want. Don't tell me what to do, because that's not love. So the world says everything is okay except God's way. Um, worship whatever you want, but don't worship Jesus. Hmm, that doesn't seem to be very tolerant, is it? Seems to be it's just biased in a whole new way. So God is constantly active, and he's calling to you and I to join him in this. Over to chapter 14. And verse 1. Mashiach says, let, your, let not your heart be troubled that you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, that you may also be. It's pretty awesome. God says, not only am I preparing something for you, I want you to be there. I desire for you to be there. And oh God, we look and feel so many times in this world that is, there's, there's no end. But we have to keep our eyes upon you that you are the light in which that we seek. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard that which has been prepared from before the foundations of the earth for us. Um, the book can only give us shadows of what it's like. It only points us to the light, but the glory and the beauty of the splendor of being in that place is beyond words. Our, our, our human languages can't, can't touch it. And so we have to be those that set our eyes on the light and the hope, and that's faith in action, that, we, that, that his, his word is true and that we follow him and, and walk in his footsteps. And when we say walk in his footsteps, are we saying that Messiah had an easy life? If you were to put his sandals on, and walk through everything that he went through, do you think you could take it? No. We all struggle with whatever it is that is the cross upon us. The cross is the instrument that you and I carry with us for our purification. Messiah didn't need purification. He showed us the way. He gave us the example. He was faultless, blameless, sinless, and yet... He says, you take up your cross now, whatever that is, and follow me. He says, continuing in verse 4, that where I go you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Yeshua said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, for no one comes to the Father except through me. He is the door. I mean, he's the path, and he's the destination. There is no communion with God without Jesus, without Yeshua. We follow and we, his words to be true. And he says that if you follow me, if you walk in my footsteps, you will suffer. And you will in, be forced to, to deal with things. But it's not the things that happen, it's what you do with them. The endurance, the patient uh, endurance and perseverance that falls into the shalom, which draws us along. It says that if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father, for that will be enough for us. Yeshua said to him, have I been with you so long that you do not know me? Philip, he who has seen me has seen the father so how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but on the Father who dwells in me, does the work. 
Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. And most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that he will do also, the greater works me than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father be, may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And if you love me, keep my commandments. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. What are, what are his commandments? What? Love. Okay. Obey. To obey? Yeah. Show humility. Yep. Uh, his commandments, again, they're pretty simple. It's, it's just two of them. I mean, how hard is that? That's, isn't that a whole lot easier than school? It's just two things to do. Well, of course, there's the substrata, uh, the two commandments, and then the, the branches off of that of how to accomplish the love for people, which is hard sometimes, and love for God. What's an example of, of loving God that we could point to? What, what's that? Loving others. Okay. Loving others. Spending time with Uh-huh. Spending time with God. What else? Okay. Caring for those that are in need, having compassion on others. Instead of you love me, you'll obey me. Yep. Yep. And that's. Being merciful. What's that? Being merciful. Being merciful. Yep. And so we, we begin to show love to God. Um, in some ways, we could say it is directly um, manoideus, man to God, but it's also showing love to people on this plane right here. And he says, when you, when you, when you take care of somebody who, who can't give you anything back, you're showing love to me. You're honoring the image that I have placed. You're honoring my creation. When we are merciful to an animal, we show God respect for his creation. And there are ways that we can show love to God that are not directly to him. When somebody compliments your child, you, you receive that, that it's, it, it is an honoring of you as well. And so likewise, when we bless others, it is a, as though we are and we are honoring God in those actions. An elder once said, we know that the Lord, while in the flesh, was kind to all people, even those who persecuted him, him, the almighty God. And he showed us the way to avoid evil and not oppose it. And he said so himself. Not opposing evil means preserving one's inner peace. Opposing evil is evil because it involves a desire to return evil for evil, on which the fallen spirits thrive. However, when they attack us and find us that we do not oppose them, then our peacefulness disarms them, and they are defeated. Therefore, we must always try to pray like this. Lord, help me to preserve my peace. Teach me to be calm and peaceful and kind, just like your angels. You see, opposing somebody means coming back and attacking them back. Um, when we hold the peace, what's better? Becoming all angry towards somebody or preserving peace? You, you've heard the saying, do not let somebody take your peace or steal your peace. We say that Satan steals our peace or this or that and he certainly isn't involved in this but you have to give away that which you have hold tight to the breastplate and to the shield which eliminates it's about finding our center in him we must read the holy scriptures every day of our lives for even if we have committed the bible to memory the words do not change, but we do. We are those. But you say, I don't like to read. Great. Listen to them. Uh, the beautiful thing about this terrible device is that you can play the scriptures and listen to them being read. And I would say that's probably even more valuable because faith comes by hearing. hearing. There's mul multiple ways that God has blessed us that we can redeem even such a thing as this little thing. John chapter 14 and verse 16. 
Continuing. And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither hears him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. Percussion. A little while longer, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. And at that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me and I in you. And he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he or she who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. That's a pretty good return on the investment, don't you think? I keep God's commandments initially because I think I should do it. But then I begin to really enjoy doing it. And that's our whole nature dying we begin to crave to do good. We begin to crave to be peaceful people. And then it becomes a, maybe a little easier. We still have to struggle. And so we begin this and continue this process that we're investing in eternity. We're showing God love by beginning to do simple things. It's not the action as it is the intention behind it. The widow who, who threw in two pennies gave more than all the others because it was the intention of her heart out of love for God and not out of glory and seeing having people go, oh, whoa, she just gave a whole lot of money. He saw her broken, her, her humility and her generosity, even though it was two pennies. And God loves that. He says that Judas, who was not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Yeshua answered him and said, If anyone loves me, he will come, sorry, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home in him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the helper, the Ruka Chedisha, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you these things and bring to remembrance all the things that I said to you. He says, have you ever had this happen before? You, you haven't read a particular Bible verse in years. And something happens or you hear something and it, you call to mind. It is written. I don't know about you, but my mind's not that awesome. Ah. It's the spirit within us quickening the storehouse of which we have stored up within us. Boom. Tap that scripture. Blessed is he who does my will. He, it is written. And we begin to be able to, to, to tap into the storehouse of what, we've, the, of what we poured in there. And this Holy Spirit is, 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 is God moving and, and pushing or, or pulling out that thing which needs to be come remembrance. Be not afraid, little children. How comforting is that sometimes when we are afraid? Know that I love you and will never leave you or forsake you. He, he, he calls to mind within us that is the Spirit moving in us. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you, for not, let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let it, nor let it be afraid. He says, don't be afraid. Um, have you ever told your child in the middle of, of a lightning storm? When they're... Uh, Hey, what do you have to be afraid about? Don't be afraid. Does that stop them from being afraid? No, but over time, they begin to see your words have merit. And, you begin, and they begin to be calm even in the midst of those storms, the winds blowing, squirrels attacking. It's, there's many things that they're not afraid of it anymore because they've seen the truth of your words. They've begun to believe in you. And likewise, you and I, as we grow and mature, when the wind, winds come and the storms come, and they will, that we're not as pushed, that we're not as afraid and tense. And we say, the peace of God is within me. Thank you, Father, for your peace. We begin to trust, and it begins to come on the outside. So 
So he says, continuing, you have heard me say to you that I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said, I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now that I've told you before it comes, when it does time come to pass, you may believe that I no longer talk much with you. For the ruler of this world is coming, and he has found here he has nothing in me. When Satan presented himself, there was nothing for him to latch on to. There was nothing, there was no fault in the perfect lamb. When Messiah descended into hell and, and knocked at the doors, blew open the doors, there was nothing for Satan to accuse him with. And he had free passage because he is king and Lord. But he says, But the world may know that I love my father, and the father gave me a commandment, so do I. Arise and let us go from here. What was the commandment that, that God gave to, to Messiah? What was it that he had to be obedient to? Death, that's right. He had to be obedient to sacrifice himself. Um, so, you think you get excited about sacrificing yourself? Ooh, 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 pick me, pick me. Um, I want to die. No, nobody gets excited about that, hopefully. But Messiah, being pure and, and God and, and holy and, and, and obedient, he, he shows the, us the way that you and I will have to walk through certain things. And will we go kicking and screaming? Or will we go out of obedience and, and growing love for God? He says, I am the true vine. This is chapter 15 and verse 1. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. Okay, so um, you're a tree. And I'm a tree. Does the tree prune itself? It'd be kind of creepy if it did. No, the, the person who knows how to cultivate the, the tree prunes where it needs to. Um, what are a lot of branches on, on, on a lot of trees? Suckers. Suckers? Yep. They suck off the life of the tree. They're already dead, but they still suck off. It's, it's a... And so if you want the tree to flourish, you're going to clip it off. Uh, so if you want to make a tree beautiful, do you just let it grow however it wants to grow? Um, I mean, I guess if you want the uh, middle of the forest wild look, I suppose. But most, most people want a cultivated, beautiful tree or shrub so that it is beautiful to look upon. And even more so that it's beautiful to look upon, what else do you, do you, know, do you really desire for that? You want to be on tough shade, yes? Okay, you want a good fruit. You want it to produce, to give back, so that it is a blessing. We, when the prophet said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And then what did he say? Man, I can't believe it, God. Blessed be God. And someone who's much better than I am will say in the, in, the, in the middle of whatever, your will be done, Father. God, you know best. Maybe even Glory to God for all things. And it starts here and filters down into here, and then it begins to be shown on the outside. A disciple once asked of one of the fathers why after years of struggle he found himself worse instead of better. The elder's response is very enlightening. 
Very few have flown up in a short time on the wings of faith and virtue into the spiritual heaven or have sensed in themselves the undying pledge of hope and betrothal of future glory. There are others who will never sense this during their whole life on earth. They will not sense it according to the dispensation of our heavenly protector, God, who always provides what is best for us. For we infants in our understanding of the judgments of him who directs the world often ask of him such tools that in their own right and, and power for our salvation, but we would put them into entirely detrimental use because of our experience. Therefore, the loving Father of lights hides certain pious people, the gifts for which are for the salvation of some, but would bring others into perdition. What would happen in God who knows all things completely fulfilled if he completely fulfilled our every wish? Whatever you want. If we take Messiah's words and say, whatever you want, you just ask for it. Do you think he meant whatever you want? Ah, I want a million dollars. Probably destroy me. I want this job. It, 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 it could destroy me. If I ask instead, oh Father, whatever you desire, please bring into my life. This is again the wisdom that comes to each of us. He says that even though he does not reject the prayers of his chosen ones, God still does not at times fulfill their desires, and only in this order to arrange everything in a better way in keeping with his divine intent. Just because you see yourself making no progress does not mean you're not making progress. Such feelings can plant sincere humility in your heart, and, and when you have the genuine awareness that you are deprived of spiritual fruit, then make an unfailing effort to force your striving for God. And when we have no success in the virtues, there is no means closer for salvation than humbleness of mind. Haughtiness, even when joined to the virtues, is offensive to God, but a humble thought will not be forgotten before God. Amen. Messiah, upon leaving this world, he accepted the cruelty of the cross that blessed his apostles with peace. It was his body falling to the earth, bloody, broken, or at least bruised, that was the seed for you and I to come into the fullness of what was promised to us, what was taken from us in the garden. It was his, he the seed that falls into the earth, that dies and then gives birth to a beautiful tree which has endless fruit. Peace, which is Messiah's, is not the, the world's peace, which is law and order on a local level and an absence of warfare on the national lever, level. His gift is more precious. His gift is inner peace. And just as he amazed the onlookers when beaten nearly to death, humiliated, mocked, forced to bear the cross, and then suffer upon it without surrendering to anger, hatred, bitterness, or despair, so too it is possible for his followers to bear their anguish, pain, and grief by opening up the channel of peace that accompanies grace from the Holy Spirit. Grace is the means by which God gives to us to accomplish his will. Peace is not running away. It is not avoiding pain and suffering. It is not a cowardly fear of danger or an absence of problems. Messiah's peace is in the, abil the ability to endure all that is laid upon us and finding a meaning in the misery. Let's say that again. Messiah's peace is the ability to endure all that is laid upon us and finding a meaning in the misery. All that happens to us in this lifetime is a, for a learning potential. And in that sense, even the negative experiences have something to teach us as long as we keep alive the access to God's spirit within. And when we say keep access to the spirit within us, what do we mean by that? Isn't he there all the time? Yes, but we get distracted by things around us. So it's of taking your physical eyes off what's going on, just having your spiritual eyes back in effect and reflecting back on him. Amen. Um, so in a river, sometimes we'll just go with the river, 
what, what happens to rivers? What, that some of it's natural and some of it's something else is a play. Okay. The water flows, ebbs, ebbs and flows. What else? There's life in it, fish and other. Okay. Um, trees fall into the river, and then there's those beavers. What do beavers do? I think there's a, a poetic metaphor in there somewhere. Is there an obstacle in your stream, in your river? I have obstacles. And every day is an opportunity for me to take action, pull another branch, pull another rock out of the river. It's flowing into, into me. Because I want more of that life flowing not just into me, when, when everything is just flowing into something, what is it? A dead sea. Um, maim haim, living water, is water which is flowing in and out. In and out. The spirit and the grace of God, the, which is the power to accomplish his will, comes into us. Not going to give it away. Not going to give it away. No. Give what we have to other people. Peace. You and I will experience this, the ebbing and flowing of our faith because it gets, gets weak sometimes. We get tired sometimes. There's things that, and we have to, by His grace, the ability to accomplish His will, to achieve what He desires. And what does He want from you and I? Um, great works, signs and wonders. Um, change your heart, and the world will change around you because of you and God in you, through you. It, it, that's a sign and a wonder. Trust me, if, if you're as messed up as I am, that's a sign to the world. Because that's the witness that God needs of us. Healed and whole people. People that are not afraid to say, I'm sorry, forgive me. Not myself today. Please forgive me. That's the beauty of this journey with God, that he is continually working in each of us. I mean, so the prayer, Lord, help me to preserve my inner peace and teach me to be calm and peaceful and kind, just like your angels. How do you think the angels, do you think the angels tremble? What do they have to worry about? Man, they're on the winning side. The angels that are, are, are abundant in here right now stand steadfast. They're not shaken by anything in this earth or in the spirit realms. They are calm and peaceful, and they do the will of, of our Father. So we can pray that and ask, may we also have this peace. And that's a prayer that God will answer, because it is his will for us. I mean, Father, we ask that you would continue this great work in each of us. Oh, Lord, when we are scared, may we turn to you and draw upon you. And, Father, that we could, like growing children, we are no longer shaken by the things of this earth. But, Father, thank you for your patience with us as we are at times. Thank you for your mercy upon us. We praise you. We thank you for this journey that we're on. May we take advantage of every day, every breath as an opportunity to praise you. We love you and thank you and ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen.